Well, it's nice to be back here uh, today to be the 65th reunion of the class of 1952. I mean, I always enjoy coming back here. I haven't been back here so much lately. I was on the uh, alumni board at one time and then the foundation board uh, when it began. And so I enjoyed uh, my uh, postgraduate work that I was doing here. But uh, uh, now it's, it brings back old memories. When I was here uh, first class year, one of the requirements was to write a term paper. Most of the midshipmen wrote something about the Navy, the operations, World War II. But since high school, I was very much interested in rocket technology. I read a paper, which I barely understood, uh, called The Method of Reaching Extreme Altitudes by a professor, Robert Goddard. And that kind of interested me in rocket technology. In fact, at one time, I wanted to be a rocket engineer, but then I couldn't afford to go to college anyway. And fortunately, after several, you know, uh, miscues because I was, I applied for the Naval Academy the first time and I was third alternate, so I didn't think I'd make it. I ended up in the Holloway program, a Naval Aviation program, very fortunate. It was really the savior of me going on. And then I got an appointment to the Naval Academy. And so, in, in 1948, I came here. Uh, but in 19, but I was still interested in rocket technology all throughout the period. Uh, we were learning about uh, the rocket technology that the Germans had used in their V2s. Uh, we were now doing some work in the United States. And so, by 1951, the requirement to do a term paper, I wrote on the development of the liquid fuel rocket engine. And my last paragraph, of course, was that someday that the rocket technology would get us into space uh, and it'll be a reality and not just a, a, a vision. I didn't know how soon that was going to come to pass. This was 51. Uh, and of course, uh, by uh, 58, they were selecting people to be astronauts. And uh, so all of a sudden, uh, technology uh, accelerated tremendously. And, uh, and I'm kind of glad that I guess I was a little bit uh, in the far reaching of, of what was going to happen in the future. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have ignition sequence start. The engines are on. 4, 3, 2, Well, I like to look back at uh, that flight of Apollo 8 going to the moon, and then I did remember my days here at the Naval Academy and the fact that uh, 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 that the experimental station was one of the forerunners of looking for rockets to take airplanes uh, to make get them off the water. They're called JATO units and everything like that. It all sort of come to pass because I got into naval aviation. Uh, and then from there, I went into test pilot work, and uh, then NASA needed test pilots, and so I just happened to fold into the right time uh, with the right credentials. Of my four flights, I really think Apollo 8 was the, uh, the highlight of my uh, space flights. Uh, first time to the moon, uh, I was the navigator, and so uh, that 240,000 mile journey, I had to do that by uh, sighting uh, stars and, and taking care of the uh, guidance system. Uh, and then the, one of the first three people to see the far side of the moon live, we had some photographs of it from uh, unmanned spacecraft going around it. 
But then seeing the earth as it really is and being able to put your thumb up to the window, and I did it many times in speeches, but everything that I knew was behind my thumb. About five billion people were living on this body that I could hide with my thumb. All the history of the earth and everything else disappeared. And I thought to myself, uh, in reality, it appears that uh, maybe God just gave us a stage in which for us to perform. And how that play turns out is strictly up to us. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Well, when we were flying Apollo 8, we had no idea of the, uh, the impact of the people watching. You have to remember the circumstances of that particular flight. Uh, it was the end of the year 1968. It took off on December 21st, I believe. 1968 was not a very good year in the United States. The Vietnam War was going on, there were riots in, uh, on schools, uh, the uh, Democratic Convention uh, in Chicago had riots, some shootings of two prominent people, uh, Martin Luther King and uh, Bobby Kennedy. Uh, and so I like to think of Apollo 8 as finally in the last days of 1968 to finally bringing the country together. We accomplished something that everybody was proud of. And that, you know, the company eventually got to be uh, together and, and, and could look back and hope for a new future. There's been a lot of new uh, thoughts concerning the future of the space program. Uh, one of them, of course, is going to Mars. We've had already a, a very sophisticated uh, robot on Mars called Curiosity that has been there for well over a year, has not only picked up material and everything like that, but is a was able to analyze the material and send the results back to JPL. We know more about Mars' surface than we knew about the moon surface when Neil Armstrong landed on it. But a man trip to Mars is still, I think, sometime in the future. Really what I think we're going to be doing, and I, the, the program is slowly aiming in that direction, to go back to the moon. The lunar flights that we did in Apollo barely scratched the surface. We should go back to the moon be comfortable making trips to the moon, build up the infrastructure and the architecture of the systems to go to the moon so that we could be very comfortable in those flights. And then take that infrastructure and develop it to go to Mars. So I think a Martian trip is going to be in the future. It's there. People are here. And once something is there as a challenge, they're going to do it, whether it's just the United States or a consortium of countries or some other country, they will eventually do it. So, yeah, Mars is in the future, but not my lifetime. Well, I think the, the Academy is important to me because it gave me an education that, quite frankly, uh, f uh, that I could not afford. And my father died when I was uh, 12. So it was almost like a surrogate father that could come in here, gave me the confidence and the reliability uh, to go on my own. And uh, consequently, uh, you know, after I got my education here uh, and spent, uh, you know, my uh, t time and, uh, in the Navy and did things that uh, gave me the ability to be on my own, 
a naval aviator and uh, then a test pilot uh, and uh, so you know I owe a lot to the Navy. I owe a lot to Annapolis. <laughs>